Uh, well, good morning. Um, welcome to this session um, talking about complementary currencies uh, as social innovations. I'm really glad to be able to chair this session and um, to welcome you to a subject which isn't often spoken about, um, but where we have um, a real expert, uh, Christian Gallery, here uh, to talk about um, complementary currencies and social innovation. Um, just moving on, um, you'll probably know me, I'm Mike Wardle, I'm the Chief Executive Officer at ZEN um, and Head of our Indices uh, Programme. Uh, my job today is really to get out of the way quickly so that we can um, hear from uh, Christian um, the actual content that you've come to hear. Um, but also I've got a couple of things to do before I do hand over. First of all, um, to give a, a huge thank you to our sponsors. Uh, we're very fortunate at the FS Club to have um, a large range of sponsors who support our work and are happy for us to um, range quite widely over the fields of economic finance, innovation, technology um, to bring content um, to you, uh, our audience. Um, and we are really, really grateful for our sponsors uh, for the work that they enable us to do. Uh, today's programme is quite simple. Um, I will uh, get out of the way in a minute uh, and leave us to uh, hear from uh, Christian Gallery. Um, there is going to be time for Q&A at the end of the session. Uh, those of you who launched, uh, who've used <coughs> GoToWebinar before will know how this works. If you haven't, you'll see on the dashboard on your screen uh, a question box. You can type in your questions there um, and the, they can do that at any point uh, during the presentation. Um, and we'll pick up the questions uh, at the end um, for discussion. Um, another bit of housekeeping just to say the session is being recorded. Um, that means that if you um, <clears throat> have colleagues you think might be interested in the presentation uh, afterwards, um, we'll have this up online uh, within about 24, 48 hours. Um, so you can uh, watch it again if you are enthralled by Christian's presentation uh, or you can share it with colleagues um, going forward. Um, that's all by way of introduction. So it really is a great pleasure uh, to introduce uh, Christian Gallery, uh, project leader at Chairman Kamgo at EB, uh, and we're really looking forward, Christian, to hearing uh, your insights uh, this morning. Thank you very much. So well, thank you, Mike. And uh, I have two questions for you, and the first one is: uh, Have you heard about complementary currencies before? And um, maybe you have some seconds to say yes or no and uh, I'm interested in your experience. Oh, that's interesting, half and half. And um, then a second question, do you, do you think that uh, money should be linked to societal goals? And that's also a simple yes or no answer. So like ecological goals, social goals, goals, or, okay, thank you. And um, yes, I will uh, talk a little bit about complementary currencies as social innovations and uh, creating money for social ecological transformation. So my main focus will be today on the ecological part of transformation. And I want to show you a very concrete example. And uh, first I um, want to um, introduce complementary currencies um, in the context of currencies. And um, I have um, made a graph uh, inspired by Beck and Garrett. They have uh, uh, some other um, cr criteria, and uh, I have, um, I have taken uh, some criteria like public and digital and peer-to-peer, -peer. and it's um, um, the criteria is if it's public or not. So the emission of of the currency is public or not, or if the currency is a digital currency or a non-digital currency, or uh, if the uh, currency is peer-to-peer, -peer, so you can exchange it uh, from someone to other like uh, cash money or like cryptocurrencies or you can um, uh, you you have a central instance like a bank and then you have to transfer money by using the central instance so that's a different peer-to-peer -peer or central and um, the fourth uh, criteria is uh, is 
is by me is that uh, you can also say societal goals or um, so social innovation. Uh, here it is sustainability and um, if, if the currency is oriented on sustainable goals or not. And um, then you can um, sort out uh, as the currencies um, where you think you you can place it and then you have um, have a um, currency form like cash and that's peer-to-peer -peer and that's uh, emitted pu published by the public, public uh, but it's not digital and um, it's not oriented on sustainability. And um, another form is bank money. You all know it, so it's digital, but it's not issued by by the public. It's not um, oriented on sustainability. It's not peer to peer, uh, but 69% of uh, of our money is a bank money. And then you you have central bank money as the second um, biggest form. Uh, that's the money issued by central banks to banks or governments and that's public and digital but it's also not um, oriented on sustainability or it's not peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, but there's many, much discussion about central digital um, um, currencies which could be peer-to-peer -peer and um, and that's that's a form you can find um, in this um, in this section uh, central bank crypto for example um, or you have the cryptocurrencies which which are which are peer to peer and digital but also not oriented sust uh, on sustainability uh, it's the opposite of them like bitcoin uh, because you you have a very high emission of carbon uh, with every transaction and uh, it's also not public. And, and then we have the complementary currencies like e-regio, um, so electronic uh, regional currencies. Uh, they are oriented on sustainability. Um, they are uh, digital, like the Kingauer or like, like um, the Yushko in France or um, like other currencies and and they try to 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 have a sustainable form uh, of money. And there's also um, cash forms of um, of complementary currencies like the Regio or the Kingauer, um, and and they are oriented uh, on sustainability. They are not digital. They are cash money, so paper vouchers or paper money and uh, you can use it peer to peer and there are also ideas like a crypto council tax credit so that's not uh, realized yet but you can imagine a currency which is issued by the public uh, on the local level and uh, you can use it to promote sustainable goals or uh, social goals and another a form of complementary currencies are time banks or barter systems. They are mutual credit systems. Um, when somebody gives an, another um, individual in the network an, um, a, a loan, and you can use the loan to to buy something within the network, and then you um, you have a, a loan, and you can. Uh, you reduce it by um, um, then you perform some um, um, something for another in 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 the network. Like you you do some gardening for one another for one hour, and the other one cuts your hair for one hour. That's um, that's the principle of time banks. Or you can also use it in business uh, in the business sector that you have mutual credits and and then you balance it again. Okay, so that's the world of um, currencies and also complementary currencies. And uh, the question is, how can we how can we strengthen the goals of sustainability or how can we promote uh, sustainability within uh, these currency designs? 
and and I want to int uh, introduce some uh, um, some um, yeah indications or some some um, uh, knowledge about uh, my research in the last four years. So so you have um, here a concept about a real world laboratory. So we try to to introduce a new uh, complementary currency it's called climate bonus and and uh, we had to think about it in the context of uh, globalization in the context of climate change in the context of covid in the last years and also in the last year with the war in ukraine and and um, you have to think hard, hard about it how do you implement um, um, currency which promotes um, the uh, climate um, protection or, uh, or a currency which is uh, oriented to reduce uh, carbon emissions. And, and then uh, we, we start to analyze and uh, to generate knowledge about it. And the uh, starting point was the Kimgao currency in our region. And we analyzed the status quo of the Kimgao and and then we had to um, to know more about carbon footprints in the in the region. So carbon footprints about products, about from businesses, from um, cities uh, or individuals. And and with this knowledge, um, we went into open workshops and talked with people, with mayors, with uh, politicians. And then we created the design of the climate bonus, so the rules and the bylaws, and and we uh, talked with the city um, of Traunstein or other cities uh, if they are um, ready to to give a funding for a program to to reduce carbon emissions, and and that fits to the policy goal of the of the uh, local governments and and then we we had a look to match it and then uh, we tried to implement it and um, um, as user-centered as possible so that uh, people are like the idea of the climate bonus so it's easy to use and um, and then we tried to apply these uh, climate bonus design um, with an incentive and with a with a subsidy program and with uh, information around it. So that's that's a um, framework of the climate bonus and that's a very concrete um, example. And the objective was to to reduce um, carbon emissions um, in the city of Traunstein, and it's oriented uh, on the proposals for the national. Um, uh, country in, in Germany, though um, when we look at the goals of the IPCC or when we uh, look at the proposals by the German Environment Agency, then we see we have to reduce the carbon emissions very quickly and um, the path would be very uh, hard when we uh, achieve climate neutrality in 2030. And um, and the city of Traunstein's wa Traunstein want to follow these um, these mitigation path. And the idea is to from the climate bonus is first to measure all uh, carbon footprints, and then to reduce the carbon footprints as much as possible. And when it's not possible to you reduce the uh, carbon footprint anymore, then we want to offer um, the possibility to compensate. And the idea of the compensation is to, to have it within the territory of the town or the region where we uh, live. So that's a big difference to other comp compensation forms. So not to plant a tree in in Brazil or uh, elsewhere for uh, a very low amount of money. Uh, the idea is to compensate carbon emissions in the 
in the same re region and to reduce carbon elsewhere when it's not possible to reduce carbon uh, in uh, with yourself. And um, one example of, of the measuring of uh, carbon emissions is the city of Traunstein. We, we tried to, to measure the, um, all emissions of the administration of the, of the city. And then we, we have seen when we use uh, uh, the greenhouse gas standard, we have about, we have about 2,700 tons of carbon, which is emitted by the administration every year. And they try, they try to reduce it. And then we, um, then they are open to, to compensate these emissions within the town. And then we have developed a program. And in this, in this program have some measurements and the most important measurement was to, to install um, photovoltaic panels um, uh, in the city of Traunstein and the, the households or businesses get subsidies from the city of Traunstein when they install uh, the solar panels. Uh, Another possibility is to uh, to switch your contract to a renewable electricity. That's also um, um, a possibility, or that you make insulation at your homes, that you reduce uh, the the consumption of of heating um, directly, or you would, can change to pellet heating. But that's uh, um, yeah, you you also burn something like like wood, but it's better than to burn oil, um, because you you uh, you get the wood from our region. So we have a region with with many with forests and wood, and um, other possibilities are car sharing or a repair of bicycles or or the uh, repair of 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 clothes like jeans, though you use the goods what you buy longer than before so that also um, saves carbon emissions um, so we have many measurements and the question is how to um, make the incentive out, out of it and and the incentive should be high enough that it's uh, interesting for a household to to make an investment in the in the photovoltaic panel or to to make the insulation at your home. And though we have um, two uh, programs in the city of, of Traunstein, which are based on these calculations. And then the city of Traunstein uh, was um, open to compensate and, and we, we uh, had a contract or we, we um, said, okay, we could offer you um, 100 euro per ton carbon and then you pay uh, about 100 euro and uh, for 2700 um, tons of uh, carbon you have to pay about 207,000 euros and that money goes into the local climate fund and from this we can issue the climate bonus and um, so for example a balcony um, panels or solar panels um, you uh, you can give subsidies for the balcony panel uh, we calculated about 120 climate bonuses and for for the photovoltaic panels uh, you get up to 1500 um, climate bonuses and one climate bonus is one euro and uh, one climate bonus is also 10 kilogram of carbon so it has a double standard. So it is covered by the money um, of the city and it has also the unit of account uh, with 10 kilogram of carbon. And, and so we try to, uh, to incentivize with the climate bonus people to uh, reduce as much carbon as possible. And that's a climate bonus circle. Um, we have um, households which, um, um, which, which installs as a photovoltaic panel, and then they bring the invoice and 
they they have a, a retrust retro, retro sharing of the of the uh, of the panel. Um, there's a German and a national register of of photovoltaic panels in Germany, and then um, then they fill in a form, and the city of Traunstein um, grants uh, 1,050 climate bonuses for the measurement, 1,000 directly to the to the household which uh, installs a photovoltaic panel, and another 50 for for smaller measurements like um, jeans repairs or bicycle repairs or when you go to a repair cafe and so we we have um, a smaller program and the bigger program with the solar panel and these 1050 climate bonuses um, are um, given to the to the household with a card it's a digital card and there are 1050 or 1000 climate bonus for the household and 50 and 50 for uh, our people which repair their their smaller things and they go shopping into uh, they go shopping in Traunstein and and then they spend the money as as uh, it would be euro so um, you get um, you get uh, for 1050 climate bonuses, uh, goods and services for 1050 euro. And then um, for the businesses, it's uh, very interesting uh, not to exchange the climate bonuses into euro because there's a fee of 5%. And that's quite expensive um, for businesses. And they are also motivated to, to spend the climate bonus again within the city. Or the region, um, and we have um, in the city of Braunstein about about um, 70 acceptance points, and then um, you can spend the climate bonus again. And um, with our experience before with the Chiemgauer and uh, and now with the climate bonus, we see that the climate bonus circulates about uh, three times in the city or around the city and then it is exchanged back into euro and um, then uh, five percent are paid so it's uh, about 50 euro which uh, the businesses pay but in the circle they they have um, they had a turnover of about 3150 uh, climate bonuses and we we have now some experience in the city of Traunstein and we also have an experience in the city of Marburg um, with a smaller network so there the multiplier is uh, higher in the city of Traunstein now and um, and it's a bit smaller in the city of Marburg because it's uh, the smaller project is expanding now and but um, but we see when we when you have the emission by the or the issuing by the city, um, you you can you can get a local business cycle with a um, yeah with a substantial amount of money, and uh, you can expand the network. And um, when you expand it, the trust grows. And I think that's the main part of a currency that that. Uh, that with the backing of the city and the network of of the city and the businesses, you have a you have a network of trust and and with this network you can um, yeah you can handle the growing uh, local business cycle. So that's that was my yeah introduction and I'm um, I'm happy when you have some questions for me and. And I can explain something more about the project, but also you can ask about the topic of complementary currencies too. And one question in the end, I think we had one question left. Yes, uh, what do we think is the future of, uh, of currency? So do we think uh, we have more uh, 
more complementary currencies in the future. Um, the main thing is cryptocurrencies, or do you see the future more in the in uh, with central bank digital currencies, so state oriented, or do you think we we stay at the system as we have it today with the uh, mainly the bank system and uh, in the banking with the central bank system and um, so that would be my question to you in the end. Well, th <clears throat> th thank you Christian and definitely a clear majority there uh, assuming that we'll have a mixed um, mixed system going forward. Uh, fascinating um, presentation um, and one of our uh, <coughs> regular uh, contributors, Hugh Perser, was saying it would be interesting to see the Beck Garrett chart, the flower that you set out, but based on weighted, uh, a weighted basis. Um, obviously, at the moment, you know, bank money uh, is the one which has the, the, the largest share. Um, <coughs> but he wondered about what your projection was as to how those shares might change going forward. What, what would the, the weighted Beck Garrett chart look like um, projected into the future? Um, yeah, okay, from my side, it's uh, I I would uh, say that complementary currencies has a have, have a very huge potential, especially on the local level, and I think we we have to strengthen the local level, and um, but uh, it's not possible with uh, private networks to to do it. Uh, it has to be a coalition on the local level with cities and with uh, businesses and with um, NGOs. And um, I could imagine that NGOs uh, would uh, drive the, the transformation together with cities and the businesses. And with this networks, you could strength, strengthen the regional level. And I, I would say the potential is huge. So t today in Bavar Bavaria, we still have business cycles within the region about 30% of the GDP or 40%. And I would say it's it's possible to have 50% on the regional level and 50% and on the global level. And and so it would be a, a big uh, thing for complementary currencies in a, yeah, maybe in a mixed system. And, um, but, but uh, on the other side, you can say, um, yeah, we have a globalization and, and there's a war between state and, and banks or private issuers of money. And um, yeah, maybe as the state will will have a bigger share in it uh, as we have, have seen it the last five years. So it's it's a very open question, but my, my case would be for uh, a stronger share or higher share of complementary currencies. Okay. Uh, Bob McDowell um, <clears throat> has commented that uh, comp complementary currencies appear to him to present themselves as being worthy and you know, good things uh, rather than having material economic benefits. Um, they're more like to tokens or voucher loyalty schemes rather than a real currency. And just ask for your commentary on, um, you know, is, is this just about um, you know, doing the right thing or is there real economic benefit? Uh, yes, in the case of, of the local programs um, with the city, I, I would say it, it, it's, uh, it's an incentive and uh, it's, uh, of course the incentive must be high enough to, to make it um, economic worth or, or uh, to see the profit in it too. So you see the good side, of course, with the transformation, you, you have the renewable energy on the one side, but but you also see, okay, when I do it, I get the backing of the state and and I, I don't have uh, a loss with it. And I think the perception that you have a loss with, um, with investments in, in, in sustainable um, goods and services, I think we have to change it. And, um, and the, uh, the state or the local state have to uh, promote this perception, then, then at least you don't have a loss when you use um, sustainable ways of, of goods and services. Thank you. Um, Hugh Perth was also asked, just going back to the measurements chart, uh, whether you could clarify 
um, the scale. Now, I think the uh, measurements chart showed um, tons per year and the total tonnage of um, mm -hmm. emissions that were um, you know, it was allocated to different types of. Mm -hmm. Is that is that correct interpretation? Yes, I, I can give you an example. So we had a photovoltaic panel, and uh, with a photovoltaic panel. Um, you produced uh, so you have 10 kilowatt peak um, uh, as as um, as power. So you produce about 10,000 um, kilowatts per year. And in Germany, you have a, a, a carbon emission mix of about uh, 400 of uh, 400 uh, grams of carbon. And, and then you have uh, to calculate the emission by this photovoltaic panel itself. So you can see uh, a photovoltaic panel also emits about 50 gram of uh, carbon every for every uh, uh, kilowatt hour. And then we have the difference uh, of 350 grams per kilowatt hour or uh, for 10,000, it's 3.5 tons per year. And the photovoltaic, photovoltaic panel uh, has a duration of 20 years, um, and and then it, the saving would be 71 ton. So it's so it's not really climate neutral neutral now because the production of photovoltaic panels issues or emits uh, carbon, especially in China. So we have uh, coal plants uh, to produce solar panels. And of course, we have to change that too. But that's the explanation of the of of the metrics. Uh, so, so about uh, one one uh, installment is uh, seventy one tons carbon in twenty years. Thank you very much. Um, Dave Birch has wondered whether um, in the future, when people begin to understand that money may embody community values, um, we'll see more innovation, and particularly thinking about local will mean something very different in the metaverse um, than it does now. Um, and just do, do you think we're going to see further developments in this kind of area and completely new kinds of currencies that we haven't even thought of yet? Yes, absolutely. I think complementary currencies are very flexible and and uh, so it in the, at first, at the first place, you always have to uh, think about the goal. Though, when you want to um, fight against poverty, uh, you have to look in which area. So, like uh, in Kenya, we also see a very interest, as interesting experiments by Sarah Fu, for example. Uh, it's a network in, in Kenya, and they work together with. Um, with the Red Cross of Denmark, and and they give um, the Red Cross gives subsidies in in in, in a international currency, but they transform it to a local currency, and and they are very creative to to um, to use it to foster uh, the networks and to to foster solidarity between people, and uh, that that. That are very interesting. You you have also examples in Brazil when uh, when the Banco Palmas works together with the state and they issue uh, help for families in the complementary currencies uh, and 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 then you have a local business cycle and uh, they organize organize also help for businesses to to start or. Um, yeah, to exist, and um, I think there are many, many possibilities here. Thank you very much. Um, it, we've got actually a comment here uh, from Stefan Schulz, who runs a small business. Schulz, who runs a small business in uh, the region, um, and he comments that the social benefit uh, from this uh, currency comes from the use of the regional currency, and eventually um, through the fact that you meet uh, engaged people. Um, who come to your business uh, in the region, there's also then a transformation of that into an economic benefit um, because people get to know you and get to know your business and get to know your trade. Um, and that's his experience of running a small business um, uh, in the area where this particular currency uh, is in operation. Yeah, um, that's great. 
Noah Natesel is on the line. He asks, what are the main regulatory and legal challenges uh, for the type of regional currency you've been describing? Mm -hmm. um, yes, we have um, two uh, in the in our Kimgao currency or the climate bonus currency. We have two parts, so the paper currency and also the electronic form. And um, that's two uh, two legal questions. So, is it allowed to issue a paper currency? And that's another law in Germany, for example, as the uh, as the law for the electronic money, which is uh, directed by the uh, payment service payment service directive uh, two um, by the European government. And there are some exemptions for small complementary currencies when you are only uh, situated in a region. It's uh, it's quite easy not to have uh, not um, big issues with the banking authority um, and there's also some something like a pathway when you get bigger then you even then you can uh, register it's a it's a, a banking authority too with a smaller form of um, of um, uh, how is it called e-money e license or like the payment uh, uh, a smaller license and then you are allowed uh, to to issue your complementary currency in a in a yeah in a bigger area for example um, in the paper example it's most mostly uh, exempted so so mostly it's allowed but there was also a hard discussion about the law in germany it's a very old law it's uh, it comes from the uh, 30s um, uh, so paper currencies were forbidden and and there's still a law in germany there was a lot of a lot discussion about it but um, the interpretation was that we are too small that um, they want so they didn't want to forbid it but um, yeah that's a that's a very old law then we have the new laws from the European Union so we have some paradox here also though it's not uh, totally easy to to see out the jungle um, how to how to have all legal issues solved so it's still an open question but at the time we 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 are quite settled with our um with our uh, initiative thank you um bob mcdowell has come back just to ask um who is the lender of last resort for the currency uh, which is always a good question to ask when you're uh, dealing with money. Um, mm -hmm. So, is it really the city regional taxpayers who come to the rescue of a currency if it, if it runs into trouble? Um, yes, in in the case of the climate bonus, every uh, it's like a prepaid currency because um, the city pays the euros into the reserve fund, and 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 that's the uh, the last the last. Um, instance and uh, when somebody wants to re-exchange his um, climate bonus into euro there's always a fund and you always have the link uh, one climate bonus is one euro so of course when you have inflation uh, then you have the problem in the euro and also the climate bonus too um, but the fund is the same so we have uh, we, have, we have this within it and uh, but it's uh, it's a very interesting question because um, uh, the trust grows with this um, this is um, yeah um, when you when you guarantee the backing 100 percent then you also have the trust into these kind of currency so you can compare it with a stable coin um, but um, as a small initiative. Um, I think we we also have uh, that we have the connection to the social network. So we all live here, and um, and uh, when two or three people um, control the fund with their signature, um, they also are present in the city or in 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 the social network. And mm -hmm. I think that's a difference also to the, to a stable coin where you have something in Hong Kong uh, with a reserve fund and um, yeah, maybe it works, maybe not, but um, 
we never had a problem with a complementary currency with with uh, uh, backing that uh, you don't got uh, you don't get your money so uh, you always get your money with these kind of small uh, currency initiatives super um, we've got time for a couple of very last questions. Um, first of all, Christopher Gleedel asks about the performance of photovoltaic panels. Is the performance of solar panels declines over time, um, mm -hmm. and whether you calculate the output or the benefits of the straight line impact? Um, and the second question: How do you account for the replacement impact of recycling? Mm -hmm. Okay, the first one is uh, the calculation of the of the. Uh, uh, kilowatts is uh, calculated uh, with an average um, uh, average measurement and and that's an um, experience uh, over 20 years so that's that's so we know the last 20 years uh, how much uh, how much kilowatt hours are uh, produced by a photovoltaic system and that's um, that's our calculation basis mm -hmm. and um, um, and there are also possibilities. So we we have a solar cleaner in our network. So so she cleans your your solar panels, and and then it's it's uh, nearly uh, to the to the new panel with the clean panels. But uh, of course, over time, it's a small depreciation. And the second one with the recycling. Um, the first thing is uh, photovoltaic systems. Um, we know systems which are much more than 20 years now, so so we don't know uh, how how long we can use it. Um, maybe it's 30 years, it's 40 years, and um, and uh, so we have solar panels here with 25 years, and they are they work. And the other thing with recycling is a big question, of course, in the solar industry, and um, they try to to uh, have a better separating of materials, and uh, of course that's um, that's uh, that's a big question um, because with every production of energy, you you uh, you have emissions of carbon, and you also have. Um, pollution of environments so uh, the best thing is to avoid um, uh, to avoid the consumption of energy so insulation or or reduction of of energy consumption comes first thank you very much uh, very finally um, hans florian Hoyer has asked uh, whether your observation is that there's been an improvement in the sense of coherence in the city in the region um, you know, is there actual evidence of, the, of a social impact in terms of people feeling uh, more ownership, more coherence in the region? Um, yes, we, we, we have the, um, in the Kimgau, we have the mechanism of, of, um, of giving 3% to, to social initiatives. And, um, and, and with this um, kind of, of issuing money to, to donate money to to non uh, NGOs, um, it has a, I think, a, a big impact over the time because um, schools get money, kindergartens get money, and 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 uh, the connection between businesses and NGOs is stronger. So mm -hmm. uh, the NGOs are thankful to to the local businesses, and they um, uh, they are more open to buy at these uh, businesses. So and and over time, the network gets stronger and stronger, and, and, and when the when the city joins, um, then it's also a big factor uh, to that the trust between people grows. And um, and of course, one big point which we haven't solved uh, quite yet is uh, the question of accepting taxes, um, local taxes by businesses. So we work on it, but uh, that's a legal question um, that uh, that's very hard to solve. Uh, we worked to we had to work together with the University of Würzburg, uh, where I worked uh, four years, and and um, we are very near to a solution. But um, but that's in German in in German legal uh, question. That's a very very complex one. <laughs> Well, thank you very much indeed. Uh, it's been a fascinating um, discussion um, and really good to hear um, that things are, are going well 
uh, in terms of the development of this this type of uh, value exchange. Um, just to um, final, finalize the session, uh, first of all, uh, thanks again to our sponsors. We really are grateful for the opportunity to uh, put on sessions like this and to uh, engage uh, in such uh, fascinating uh, topics. Um, and it just remains for me to um, tell you we've got some uh, new events coming up. Um, <clears throat> so tomorrow, uh, the future of commercial insurance and whether uh, digital insurance is the way ahead. Um, we're having a, a conference in Guernsey um, on the end of the week about employee share schemes uh, and the trustees conference uh, for the uh, employee share ownership program. Um, <clears throat> next week, uh, technology and finance in terms of improving the society and the planet, really a continuation of the discussion we've had today. Um, and how, how can we help uh, people survive in emergencies? Um, if you're interested in any of that or interested in our work, please do get in touch. Uh, keep an eye on the website. But just finally, uh, just want to express my thanks first to you, the audience, for uh, attending today and for the lively engagement in the questions. Um, but most of all, Christian, thank you so much uh, for your time and your presentation. Um, it's been a really a concrete example um, of how different, different ways of thinking about money um, it can lead to, lead to benefits. Uh, normally on a big presentation, I'd throw the floor open, you'd have a huge round of applause. Um, unfortunately, I could just give you the small one. <laughs> Thank um, you very much. Really, my uh, sincere thanks. Um, um, we very much look forward to uh, finding out what happens next in terms of your uh, your work. Hmm. That was great for you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye-bye, everyone. See you next time.